guys, welcome to episode number 37 of the Good Boy Bro Podcast. My name is Kate and this is my little bro Cam. Don't sleep. Don't sleep, baby. It feels like it's been forever since we've done this. Yeah. It's been like, <laughs> hope you guys had happy holidays. Yeah. Merry Christmas. It's been like a week and a couple happy days. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. That's, those are the only ones I know. Yeah. So whatever you celebrate. Kanye went ahead. I appreciated that. Yeah. Happy Kanye Day. No, he, said, you know he's been missing? What? They can't find him? Like three weeks, I think he's been missing. Are you serious? Yeah. I hope His he's managers not. managers don't know where he is. I hope he's not like dead. I don't think he's dead. He's probably just hiding. Maybe he's like, is done. Like he's just never going to come back into the light. Maybe. But I knowing it. Kanye, he's going to do like some grand entrance yeah. back into Maybe wherever. He's gone to four. Yeah. He, I don't know. He, he's This is a definitely a PR move, I'm sure. It seems like everything Kanye does is a. Is something weird. Yeah. There's just something to elevate his, like, mystique. I don't know. Yeah, so we're looking at the TV right now because it's showing that the Washington Commanders are eliminated from playoff contention, which is not a surprise, really. But um, Carson Wentz started yesterday. No touchdowns, three picks. <sighs> I mean, is he going to be out of the league soon? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be out of the league. Which is, I was going to talk about this because in 2017, Carson Wentz had an MVP type year and then got hurt at the end of the year when he was primed to win the MVP and the Eagles backup won a Super Bowl. And now in 2022, their starting quarterback who was primed to win the MVP got hurt at the end of the year and maybe their backup will win a Super Bowl. Maybe Gardner Minshew. Yeah, I'm just kidding. He's no way. Gardner Minshew will deliver them. Unless the Eagles just carry him. That's what I'm saying. But Nick Foles had to play out of his mind. Threw for like 400 yards in the Super Bowl. Hey, turn that down a little bit. <laughs> You're good. All right, we're going to go over to Monday Night Football. We got the Bengals versus the Bills. Um, slugfest down there. Best Fighting Monday Night Football of the year. Yes. By far. I agree. All the primetime games that I've Best watched have been, especially Thursday Night Football, has yeah. been awful. They yeah, so we got Joe Burrow versus going. Josh Allen, um, two heavy hitters, MVP yeah. candidates. Two of the best teams in the so NFC. For me, though, I think what it's going to come down to is not necessarily the QB performance, it's the defensive performance. And with how the Bills' defense has played lately, I just don't see it happening. So for me, I think jo- I think Joe Burrow has a great game. Um, the Bills have given up more 100-yard receiving games than any team in the NFL. So I think Jamar Chase has a great great game, and by default, T. Higgins does. <laughs> But my ultimate prediction, my Mystic Mac prediction. <laughs> this Allie, is like just like yeah. the worst. Allie, stop. There's, a, there's sirens. Yeah. There's sirens down there. <laughs> She's not all uh, the way downstairs. So our dog, we had to restart our recording because our dog yeah. knocked down our light. And we made her go downstairs. <laughs> she goes downstairs. Now she's howling at sirens. Yeah. That was just not. She can't win. No, you can't. But anyway, my Mystic Caden prediction, my Mystic Mac prediction is going to be that Jamar Chase has over 100 yards receiving and that Joe Burrow throws for 400 yards. Okay. I'll give you the Joe Burrow for 400 yards, but you can't say the Mystic Mac Jamar Chase gets 100 yards receiving like he does almost every game. Oh. What? what do you mean? Those are those are pretty heavy predictions. Uh, I would go with the Joe Burrow one for four hundred is heavy. Okay, I just combined them. That's even, right, that's right, even fine. worse. I'll let that's you combine. Parlay. Them. All right, I'll let you parlay. But you have to get them both right. You but, can't but just have one anyway, right. So who you got, Bills or Bengals? Bills, because I don't think the Bills played bad defense against the Bears last week. Josh Allen threw two bad picks, which put him in bad positions. The Bills defense was actually carrying that game. And Josh Allen just kept putting him in bad position. So I think the the Bills are primed to win this game. I think Josh Allen's going to have a bounce back game, mm-hmm. and the Bills' defense are going to do well. Plus, what win streak? How many games has the Bengals won in a row? Five. Oh, that was more than that. But the I think Forty Niners have won nine, nine in a row. Yep. I think the Bengals are due for a loss. Plus, the Bills are going to want that one seat because you're not going to want to play. Wait, game. wait, you said the Bengals win streak? Yeah. You said the Bills. No, I said Bengals. No. Oh, I meant to say Bengals. They have a. Um, let's see. They be they've. This is their last however many games. Okay. Patriots, Bucks, Browns. That's three. Chiefs, Titans, Steelers. That's three more. Um, 
Panthers, and then they lost to the Browns. So they got seven win streak, seven game win streak. Yeah, yeah, they're due for a loss, and the Bills are gonna really want that number one seed because you're not gonna want to play Kansas City at Kansas City again because you're gonna lose. So your only hope to beat Pat Mahomes is to be home. And the Bills or the Bills have won six straight. Yeah, so they're due. No, but they're oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah, but the Bills were struggling. So were the Bengals. My, I know, but that w- until they got all their all their pieces back. Yeah, the Bills were just struggling, just struggling. Well, now the Bills are the ones losing their pieces. Who did they lose? Von Miller. Oh. Their defense is that was a that was like four games, five games ago. That was like two. No, yeah. that was not two games ago. That was like five weeks ago. They lost Von Miller. I don't think so. And but, it seems like it hasn't made a huge impact. They, their pass rush is still fine. I no, their defense is hurt. Okay, yeah, Von Miller is hurt. No, He's done for the year. They have more than one defensive player hurt. Okay. And so does everybody in the NFL. I know. That's why it's – I mean, they're still a great team. I didn't say they weren't. I just said that I thought the Bengals would win. The Bengals are also a great team. So, with that being said, do you think the Bills finish the one seed in the AFC? Yeah. You'd have to. Yeah, I know, because they're going to win against the Bengals and they'll win their last week. And the Bills will get the number one seed. Plus, they have the tiebreaker over Kansas City. Because after that – the bill, the Bills have to win or lose one, and then the Chiefs have to win out to get the one seed. I hope the Chiefs get the one seed, but I don't think they will. Yeah, I mean, well, the the Bills have the Jets next. The Bills need to fight for their life to get this one seed because yeah, you're not beating Kansas. matters more now. Or no, they play the Patriots, so they play the Bills and the Patriots. Yeah, you're not gonna beat Kansas City at Kansas City. I don't care. That's rough, man. I, I, I mean, I don't see the Patriots beating them. And currently, no. Yeah, I don't see the Patriots beating them. I, I mean, I, I don't is know. There, is there any status on if uh, two is going to be back? Usually it's two weeks, so I, I, I think it's four weeks, actually. But he missed two games last time. He might. He's probably done for the year, even if they make the playoffs. I don't he know. He could be. I mean, play. three concussions in one year. I wonder if he's going to be like Andrew Luck and retire really early. Maybe even earlier. Because Andrew Luck retired at 30. He's, what, 25? Tua? Yeah. 24? I yeah, guess like he could retire in the next two or three years if he keeps getting hurt like but this. But should he? Should two retire early? Yeah, if he keeps getting concussions like this, you, like you're thinking about your whole life. Yeah, I agree. And and it's not just concussions; he just gets injured like all the time. Like the hip injury he had at Alabama against Mississippi State, that injury was brutal. Like he shattered his hip. And it just seems like he's one of those guys that just keeps getting hurt and hurt and hurt. And at some point, you just got to hang up the cleats because you're going to die at 50 if you don't. Like, if you just yeah, keep I mean, getting me, or you'll turn it into Antonio Brown and lose your mind. It Obviously, sucks I don't because think Tua would do that. Tua is such a great guy. Like, he yeah. is a great guy. So, that obviously sucks to see. But at the same time, you know, four great guys, you want great things. And it might just be that he. You know, moves on from football, yeah. at least from being on the field. Um, I mean, he still accomplished a ton in this football. Obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he had, he, he's a top one percent, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But so. regardless, I'm sure he wanted to have a highly successful NFL career. Yeah, and it looks I mean, like he's I'm not sure. going to get the opportunity potentially. Potentially, yeah. I mean, who knows what could happen? But, but yeah, if I'm him, I'm leaning towards calling it, man. Honestly, not yet though. I would just play another year, see how it goes and everything. I wouldn't call it yet. So, the last player to have three concussions in one season that I can remember is Luke Keekley. And he retired early. And he retired like early. At 30, though. 29. Like, 29, but yeah. yeah I'm, but he's only, like, 24, 25. Right, but that was right after he had the three concussions oh. in one year. I don't know. I mean, you got to, at some point, just put your – body and mind over football yeah so we'll it's see. sad to see yeah all right we're good there all right jair alexander absolutely destroyed like ufc conor mcgregor in his prime destroys oh boy for the vikings the probably the best overall player in the nfl right now justin jefferson on, on pace to break multiple calvin johnson uh hold on hold on hold on hold on he's not the best player in the nfl there's a lot of... He's the best wide receiver in the NFL, not the best player. There, there's, like, a, a very heavy case that he's the best overall player this How? year. How? How is he better than... Because he's he's breaking multiple records for his position. 
Okay, but uh, but the receiver position doesn't compare to a quarterback position. That's value. Stop putting value. value. Stop. Okay, so what you're saying is compared to his contemporaries, he is has the mo- biggest gap between any sure. other position. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's how why you I can said put overall. It. Okay, but no, overall would mean uh, every no, single player. Best player would mean that. Yeah, he's not the best player. I didn't say he was. You just said he's the best overall player. Well, first of all, I, like four or five people I've heard say that. I'm not. I'm not the. Fr- I didn't well, just make this. They're up. all tripping. They're I didn't tripping. just make this up. I didn't, okay, I don't care. I mean, he's Who having the best that? season a wide receiver's had since Calvin Johnson. Okay, that doesn't make him the best. I don't care what kind of year you have, unless like you're not gonna be better than the top quarterback. You're not gonna be better than that. That's just a not a good take. How? First of all, two years ago, Aaron Donald was the best player in the NFL. He's not a quarterback. Yeah, either. but that's a that's a pass rusher. That's the second most important position in football behind a quarterback. I'm just saying that the best overall player can be any position. No. Yeah. No. Not the that. most valuable player, the most important player, the best player, but just best overall. I don't agree with that. Okay. Uh, I mean, the best the overall. Yeah. Then I I agree with that as far as like. Maybe he has the biggest gap between his between him and the next best receiver. Sure. I don't even know if he does, but yeah. But I still would disagree with that. Okay. Just think. this isn't even the topic. Jerry Alexander gets in his head hard. I mean, literally just gritties on him, holds him for one catch. I believe one catch for sixteen yards, and it was honestly pretty wild to see. And any MVP talk is probably squashed after that. Honestly. Like hopefully yeah. he still breaks some records and it's like he has a good game. Well, we already broke Randy Moss's record for, the, for Vikings. the Vikings, yeah. But I'm talking about overall, yeah, in the whole NFL. But uh, for me, Alexander, with that performance, probably just put himself as a top five corner in the NFL. Yeah, I mean it seems like nobody could stop him the whole year, and then you get this guy who holds him to one catch and 16 yards. Not only that, he just got in his head like nobody has this whole year. I mean, he, like that play where he took off his helmet and, and elbowed the ref. The ref <laughs> yeah, that was pretty rough. I mean, and the announcers were calling, or Tony Romo and the other guy were calling it the whole game, just saying how out of sync Justin Jefferson was. And yeah, not he, that he Kirk almost looked, he Kirk looked didn't help him at all. Well, he looked like the like rookie Odell is what he looked like, just so frustrated. Yeah, by not getting like targets and catches or whatever. I mean, it it was it was kind of eye opening. Like maybe. I hope this isn't a sign for things to come where he can get locked up like that. Or if man, he does, I, I he mean, just he gets in his head so much. Everybody's bound to have a game like that, man. Especially when they're – it's not like Kirk Cousins was playing a good game and they just couldn't find each other and they were out of sync. Like, that game was bad. Their, their offense sucked. Their offense yeah. was bad. It's so weird how they either get blown out when they lose or it's every game's close. It's just weird. <laughs> I it's believe like they won compl- 11 games by one possession. Right. Their, their plus minus is negative 27. Yeah, because they got blown out by Dallas, and then they just got blown out by Green Bay. Minus 27, and they're going to be a 12-win team. Yeah. That's insane. They're already 12 wins. I think they'll lose next week is why I said that. Oh, okay. But um, Who are they playing next week? I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's pretty wild to see a team do what they do. And they play so, like, they play just weird. Dude. I honestly don't know how to predict how they'll play in the postseason. The Bears. Oh, okay. They'll probably win. The Bears look like they're throwing. They're throwing They're throwing what? for a draft pick. I also think people need to hold their horses on Justin Fields, man. I mean, when you run as much as Justin Fields does, you just create so many problems for yourself, and you open yourself up to so many injuries, and then when you have to pass – and you suck at passing because he does, then it's just it's not a recipe for success at all. You cannot rely on your legs that much. You can't. Yeah. So I, if I'm the Bears, I'm not sold on Justin Fields yet. I'm not saying he shouldn't start next year or anything. I think you should definitely give him more time to develop as a passer. Like we just saw Jalen Hurts. He now Jalen Hurts wasn't near as bad as Justin Fields was at passing. I don't think. Not in the NFL. Maybe in college, but he, they gave Jalen time to develop. So. They should do the same thing for Justin. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's what they're going to do, and they're they're going to take, you know, their number three pick or whatever they get, and and draft somebody that helps yeah. him. But I just in, think in that they way. should like relax on that. Which this this uh, draft doesn't seem like it's super 
as far as like projections, this draft isn't super receiver heavy, like the past drafts have been. Yeah, but I mean they're gonna have a pretty high pick, so they'll probably take a pass rusher. No, I know. I'm saying like, which is I another d- reason like they trade. They could help them by getting a receiver, but it seems like there isn't any like super dynamic receivers in this draft. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think there's gonna be a receiver drafted like in the top ten. Second maybe. round. Yeah, I'm just saying there might not even be a receiver drafted in the top ten. If it, it'll it'll be that guy for USC, Addison. But Boutte, that guy for LSU, kind of fell off mid year. Yeah, he, he kind of he, he dropped his draft. Yeah, draft stock. major. Yeah. But the guy, I mean, the guy for Ohio State, Marvin Harrison, he's mm-hmm. a, is he a junior? Oh, yeah, he's he'd be the one. That's a top ten, yeah. for sure. He probably still will be, actually. That guy, they have three. They have three dudes that are ridiculous on that. Ohio State? Yes. They have that guy who opted out who was hurt the whole year, which Todd McShay was saying how that was a bad look for the draft because they thought he was healthy to play in the college football playoff, but he opted out. Yeah. That guy, um, Ninjimba or whatever, mm-hmm. who went off in the Rose Bowl, had 350 yards receiving. That guy, they could have had him, Marvin Harrison, and Emeka Doka or whatever that guy's name is. They have all have such – Yeah, yeah. All of them have weird yeah. names. But, dude, if they all three were healthy, bro, they would have probably been the best team in college football. So – Brock Purdy and the 49ers win their fourth or ninth straight game. Uh, he's 4 0. How do you? I don't, I cannot think of a rookie that has led the team to a Super Bowl in the way that Brock Purdy would have to. Tom Brady. He, he wasn't, wasn't a rookie. rookie. He wasn't a rookie, but okay. it's almost the same situation. But he wasn't a rookie. So, I'm just saying, I'm just saying uh, Tom Brady had a year and a half to learn the offense, where yeah. Brock Purdy had half a season. And, uh, and, he, and at the beginning, he was a third string, probably getting a tenth of the reps. Yeah. So, anyway, regardless of all that, I can't remember a situation where a QB has come in like this as a rookie and won a Super Bowl. Um, but it seems as though analysts and other people are pretty high on the 49ers, and they give them a very heavy shot to at least win the NFC. Yeah, um, I think they should be the favorite. Is the pieces around Brock Purdy in their defense so elite – that an, a rookie QB can win a Super Bowl. Yeah, because we were just talking about how we were arguing at the beginning of the season you have to have a top five quarterback to win. And now we backtracked on that during the year because teams are running more and using more skill position guys to carry the offense. And I feel like they still they, – like Debo got hurt against Green Bay and or no, against Tampa, and he's, he's going to come back at the end of the year. And they're – I mean – they got Debo and Christian and McCaffrey. Is Joe, honestly, a genius. Yeah, they're gonna have a they're gonna have a dynamic offense, and their defense is gonna put them in good field positions time after time because their defense is ridiculous. They're gonna create turnovers. They're gonna get sacks. I mean, they are a ridiculously good team. If they had a top ten quarterback in the NFL, they would be one of the best teams in the last ten years. That's how yeah. good of a team they are. If they had yeah. somebody like. Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, any of those guys, they would be one of the best teams in the last 10 years, easily. Maybe even the last, like, 20 years. Yeah, dude, they look good. They look really good. Probably the best defense in the NFL. De- no, that's not even um, a question. That they are. One of the best running attacks in the NFL, especially once uh, Debo comes back and, because they use him so dynamically. And Brock can run a little bit that Jimmy G couldn't. Yeah, Brock, Brock's mobile. And then, uh, obviously, George Kittle is an amazing tight end. Yeah, they I mean, are. They're, they're loaded, man. They are and then Ayuk, loaded. Ayuk is a great yeah. receiver. They are loaded. Like they're stacked. They should win the NFC, I think. Unless, like I, I I'm kind of worried about the Eagles because I just feel like like the Eagles I don't want Jalen Hurts. No, just in general because I don't want Jalen Hurts' first game back to be in a playoff game because I just feel like that's tough on somebody who missed, like, four weeks, and now his first game's in the playoffs. What if he just has a bad game because it's his first game back? I mean, he would have only missed three. But. I think just that's a concern in of itself. And I feel like the way the Eagles were trending, they were just winning and winning and winning, and it almost felt like they were still getting better each week. I feel like Jalen getting hurt is a big setback for them, yeah. to be honest. And I think that the 49ers are going to ride this way into the playoffs. And that they should be the favorite to win the NFC, and ultimately win the Super Bowl. I think. I mean, I they think they're going ten straight wins going yeah, to the playoffs. That's what I'm saying, and I think that 
I think that they are going to win the NFC and have a good shot to win it all. So, I don't know if you even remember, but before the NFL season, my pick to win the Super Bowl um, was the Bills. But do you remember who I had them playing? The 49ers? No. The Packers. The Packers? Oh, yeah. And now, it the Packers control their own destiny, and they're a win away. Yep. They're a win away. I... I mean, I I I do. I, I'm going to say so, this. I think. Right, let me fin- say one more thing. If the Packers do, do you know who they play? They they're the last wild card, and mm-hmm. then they play the 49ers again. Yeah. They're not winning. <laughs> I mean, that's just nuts. They're not winning. But, um, I feel like you got to respect Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady of what they're doing. Like how old they are, and like when you put them in playoff situations, I I do feel like there's anything is possible. Yeah, like I'm not gonna put it past them to win and go to the NFC Championship. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna under underestimate them. So yeah, if they win and they do play the Four Niners, they definitely have a yeah. puncher's chance. I just want to pick them. And the same thing with the Bucks to the Cowboys, dude. I'm telling you, like the way the Bucks are playing, if they keep the game close and you give Tom Brady the ball with three minutes left, you're going to lose the football game. You're going to lose. Yeah. Especially I mean, with the Cowboys because they choke everything. So why wouldn't they choke this game? And I'm sure Dak is – and they already beat him. I know this was the first game of the regular season, but they beat him before. Yeah. Dak played trash. He did. And who knows? I mean, you know it's, almost, it's almost a guarantee. Week one. Yeah, week one. It's almost a guarantee that he throws two picks every game now. Like, you're going to get two turnovers each game. And listen, I don't care if it's on the receiver, him. It's just going to happen. So you can blame it on whoever, but it happens. Why does it not happen to other quarterbacks as much as Dak? He's been hurt for five games this year, and he's tied for the lead in the NFL in picks. And that if that doesn't concern you, then you're just pushing it to the side and you're turning your I will say this, cheap. though. Because of the star on the helmet, there is a heavy, heavy, heavy critique on the sure. Cowboys. So, with that being said, since Dak's return, they're six and one prior to this week. So they're seven and one now. Six and one prior to this week. Two other teams that are six and one in that span are the Chiefs and the Bills. Dak has eight interceptions. Mahomes and and Josh Allen had seven. In so the like past eight games in that in those seven game stretches that they were both six and one. He had eight, and they both had seven. So, I mean, we can say what we want, but the truth of the matter is, when it comes to those guys, we treat them not as harsh as we treat Dak because, because he plays for the Cowboys. No, not, no, it's not just because he plays for the Cowboys. It's because of what has happened with Dak in the playoffs. We know that Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes give you success in the playoffs. Dak hasn't proved himself in that area yet, so we're going to critique him harder. It's warranted, what I think. I'm sick of I, I can't. Oh, I like it. No, getting with the like getting into the podcast world and stuff, it's great cuz like I just love these Cowboys fans, man. Like <laughs> I I understand Stephen A now. I understand it. I'm going to take the role of Stephen A Smith Jr. when it comes to the Cowboys because I promise you you guys will find a way to screw it up and I just can't wait. Because it it would be hilarious. If all this happened and the Bucks sneak in the playoffs, or they're in the playoffs now, and they beat you guys in the first round, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Yeah. And why wouldn't it happen? Why would you think the Cowboys are going to win? They're a better team. Yeah, but I'm just saying that they've lost when they were the better team plenty of times. Yeah, I just they don't do. trust them. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. But even, like... Just one more thing. Even with you saying that in that span, that he they only threw one less pick. When you just take the whole season, though, he's played five less games and yeah. is tied. No, no. Lead. To your credit, they when they threw those picks, he also uh, he also threw for like three hundred sixty yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, like Dak is throwing for two hundred fifty yards, two touchdowns, two picks. But they're throwing for 350. Because they're more involved with the offense. They're throwing way more times. Like you were saying, when he throws. Yeah, yeah, they, they throw more. So they're, they're, I mean, Josh Allen is the offense. offense. Josh Allen yeah. is. And Pat Mahomes is. He, I mean, he's responsible for like. Dang near. It, it's Josh a big jump. Allen. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I believe that Pat, Patrick Mahomes is responsible for like 60 something percent of their overall yards. Josh Allen is 80. Yeah. 
Eighty yeah, percent of the yards that the Bills get has Josh Allen. The ball is in his hands at some point. They ball. better change that up before he takes too many hits, because that dude does not slide. No, that dude, Josh Allen. I mean, a beast. He's a big guy. Yeah. So you have to think that maybe the lifespan is quite longer than a smaller guy, obviously that runs the ball, like a Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson's a little bit skinnier, even though he's tall. Uh, Justin Fields, those guys. But when it comes to Josh Allen and his size, yeah, it, it looks like it's gonna last. But at some point, hits are hits. Like, yeah. like Derrick Henry is huge, and it's but his lifespan is gonna be shorter than if he was huge and played QB. But yeah, and like Josh Allen, like for for me, hits are in an, an, a variable. They're an X, and whatever that number is, three thousand hits, two thousand yeah. hits, whatever it is, when you hit that, it's over. It's like a pitcher. It's like a pitcher and pitches. Yeah. So for me, I don't know what that number is for Josh Allen. But he's getting there quicker, sooner rather yeah. than later, with yeah. the amount of times that he takes. And if you watch Pat Mahomes run, because he'll run sometimes, and he's so good at just avoiding tackles. Like, he's just, he's he doesn't weird. get hit. He runs so awkwardly, too. He's like, well, the dude went to strip the ball yesterday. Yeah, and he's like, and he held the ball over the dude's head. <laughs> <laughs> so that he grabbed his Watching face. Pat Mahomes is like literally watching backyard football. It's so much fun. Like, I'm so glad that dude is in the league. And talking about Derrick Henry, too. Dirt. Literally, you've been voice cracking. I just haven't called I you know, out. I know, I know. They uh, said something in the comments of one De- of them. Oh, really? Oh, Dallas Ken- Cowboy thing? Oh, I voice like, cracked? Yeah, he was like, hard to take a dude serious when his voice cracked four times. I'm sorry, guys. I can't control that. Okay. And you Go also can't control the Cowboys suck. But anyways. <laughs> anyways. Um, the Titans have the worst ranked offensive line in the NFL. Yeah. They also, like you were saying, they stacked a box. Because they know Ryan Tannehill's not a threat. And he still has the third most yards as a running back in the NFL. And I know he gets a lot of carries, but that's still insane. Like, imagine if he was on a different team who actually had a quarterback and they could, you know, play action, whatever, and they had to respect the pass. Dude, he would be having another almost 2,000-yard year, I think. Yeah. Which I hope that he leaves the Titans or something happens and they get better because his lifespan is getting shorter as well. For sure. Because of how many For carries sure. he gets and how many hits he takes. For sure. Um, Anything else in the NFL? I think that's all I got. No, that's it. You can go to the NBA a little bit. Yeah, so uh, the other night, Luka Doncic, 60-20-10. Just dropped 51. First two. time in NBA history, just dropped 51 last night. For me, unless you're a Celtics fan... He's the MVP, dude. And he's better. He's the MVP. He, he's having a better year. He's carrying his team more. He's the four seed with nobody. No other all-stars on his team. And, yeah, I mean, I just don't I just don't see it. I mean, Tatum, he's he's smooth. He looks great. Yeah. He has a great shot. He's fun to watch. He's athletic. Um, but Doncic is just something else, bro. Doncic <laughs> is, like, he, he's, like, between the two even, He's special, In man. two years, if there's no Giannis, he's the face. Yeah. We have never seen anyone like Luka Doncic in the NBA. We have it's seen Doncic. We have seen Doncic. No. Doncic. 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 Yeah. Doncic. We have seen Luka. We have never seen anyone like Luka Doncic play. <laughs> I don't care. Luka Doncic. I don't care. I'm saying it like that. Whatever. We have never seen anyone like Luka play ever. We have seen so many Jason Tatums, and that's fine. He's just a two. He's a good two-way player. He reminds me a lot of Kawhi in his prime, but... Like I said a month ago, and you guys were grilling me for not mentioning Jason Tatum. I don't care if they have the one seed. They have the best team around them, and they have a good system, good coach. Like, the coach that stepped in has done a great job. Um, Jason Tatum does not make people better like Luka does, and that is what is the best player in the NBA. Why did everybody say that LeBron was better than KD all those years? Because LeBron makes people better around him. So does Luka. He has that too. So does all the all-time greats when you put him up in the top five. Jason Tatum doesn't make people better. He's just a a good two-way player, a great two-way player. But he's not. He does not Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic. And I told you guys that a month ago. No, everybody's going to be like, oh, Luka's the best. See, they just flip so fast. But Luka's averaging over 34 points, over 50% shooting, 9-9. and He's like a more efficient James Harden in his prime. Yeah. So, I, don't, I'm, I mean, Harden had that debate like 40 is done right up. now. Wait, yeah. what? Didn't Harden average like forty in a month? Thirty. Oh yeah, he had he had like, like some stupid streak of thirty, 
like a 30 game streak of 30 plus points or something. Yeah. But no, Luca Luca is on a different planet, man. On a different planet. Yeah, for me he's the undisputed unanimous MVP. Oh yeah. Like he is him. And what he did in that game, not only did he have 60 20 10, but to lead his the team game winning shot or the it, game tying shot. Yeah. Well, no, they, they were so I think I don't remember the they exact They were down. Shot. They scored like 10 points in like 20 seconds or something or 30 seconds, something crazy. They were down by 10 with 30 seconds left, I believe. But there was some crazy stat like teams were o in like 30,000. It was a no way, it was like 18,000 I think. Yeah, it was something crazy. Yeah, it was stupid. And that's and that's what Luka Doncic does. He just is a special player. Like he has that it, dude. Yeah, he has the it factor that's what I'm saying. Far. Like he he could, he's been hitting game winning shots like his whole career already. Remember that one against the Clippers in the bubble. Pretty but sure. anyway, so they're down. Luca leads the comeback to go to overtime. Has sixty twenty and ten in doing so, but when he misses the free throw on purpose. And it bounces around and gets back to him, and he puts it back up and makes it. I've never seen such like joy, joy. out of a person. Like he's jumping up and down and flapping yeah. his hands. He's like, like, whoa, whoa. like some people just play the game and they love it and they have fun. Yeah, and, and that is Luca. Yeah, he's like, like obviously he like it gets serious about it and he like whatever, but he plays like with like almost like a kid. Yeah, just playing the game. Like he's having fun. Yeah. He's doing what he can for his team. And to me. He's the MVP, and I don't. That's like how Steph plays. Too. I don't think it's one of those to where like it's a week to week. Like for a little bit in the NFL, it was like, oh, is it Patrick Mahomes? Is it Jalen Hurts? Oh, Jalen Hurts just had a great game. It's Jalen. It's Patrick Mahomes. For me, since basically the first two weeks of the year, Luke has been the MVP, yeah. and it's very hard for me to to change my mind. No, he's. Hey, it's it's him to lose. Like he's gonna have to play yeah. bad in the stretch, or the Mavericks are gonna have to start losing. Because I believe that you should be a top. Four or five seed. If you're below a five seed, it's gonna be tough for him to win. The Celtics, Jason Tatum will yeah. win. Then Russ won as a five. Yeah, but that was because he would made history by averaging a triple double. But I think that if Luca, if they're not a top four or five seed, then Jason Tatum will win yeah. by default. But so LeBron, what do you have? Forty seven. Forty seven. Yeah. Yeah, and on his thirty eighth birthday. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah. He, he is unbelievable. At, like, how are you this old, but you can just score forty like whenever you want? It's unbelievable. Like he's averaging, he's. About, I think he's gonna have the same scoring season as last year because if you recall, last year he started slow and then he just picked it up the rest of the year. Yeah. Like this year he started slow and now he's like scoring. You know, I think in his last seven games he's averaging thirty five or something, something like that. So. He is averaging 28 and a half points on over 50% shooting. And I think he's just going to average 30. He's 38 again. years old. Yeah. I think he's just going to average 30 again. Hopefully, hopefully what can happen is they hold down the fort. They stay in the range of 500 and maybe five games below. And then Anthony Davis comes back. But as soon as something good happens, Anthony Davis goes down. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. I can't. I've never seen someone who gets injured more than him. Never. Like, I've never seen someone who, like, I've never seen gets someone who gets injured, injured, comes back, and is super good yeah. still. And no, then he but gets he just and he comes keeps super good. getting injured, and it's always foot injuries. Yeah, I mean, he's a big guy. Yeah. I think he just, you know, Anthony Davis had that crazy, crazy growth spurt. Yeah. Remember? Because he was, like, a guard. Yeah. That's how he had he's those like ball skills. He's, like, six foot at, like, Yeah, and then he went to a freshman. 6'11". Yeah. And I think that he, maybe he just never grew into that, and his body's, like, just not. Yeah, I don't know. Never going to be healthy like that. But how does this – does the longevity of LeBron help persuade his GOAT argument? Like I how think much does it, it doesn't help? really – I think it's an argument to be made, but I think that he's just – it's championships. It's just about – it's not all about championships, but if he really wants to sway people, it's not going to be longevity. It's going to be winning another championship. If you like the people that already love him, love him, think he's a goat. If he wants to sway people from the Jordan camp, he's got to win another one. Doesn't matter what he does. Yeah, my right. All right, that's all for episode number thirty-seven. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one, episode number thirty-eight. Thanks for all the love on TikTok. It's been great.
almost like we've had like a million yeah. views this month. Oh, and by the hundred thousand this week, so like it's been it's been really really cool. Yeah, it's been sick, and, and uh, hopefully we can keep it going. This is our also our last podcast with these mics. We got yeah. new Rode podcast mics. Yeah, so they're gonna sound a lot better. So yeah. So it'll be a little bit here, uh, easier to hear us, like in your car or wherever. Yeah. Take the Good Point Bro podcast everywhere you go. Yeah. Number one upcoming podcast in the world. You heard it here. We're first. coming for you, Impulsive. We're coming for you guys. All right. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Stay safe. <laughs>